London Calling 2016. Crowded, fast-paced, and buzzing. Easily one of the most recognizable cities in the world. From the Queen's Guard at Buckingham Palace to double-decker buses. From the famous red phone booths to London's punks. Yes, punks. Apparently as British as high tea and cucumber sandwiches these days. 40 years after they ripped across the face of this country like a razor blade, they're now being feted by the establishment. Even the Sex Pistols are being celebrated, the most vilified band in Britain back in the 1970s. It's quite hard to get across. Uh, it is the, just the absolute shock that punk had. I mean, you can see it in some of the um, exhibits we've got here. It's a very, very rare record. Uh, God save the Queen. The British Library is just one of several venerable institutions celebrating punk Britain this year, unearthing its audio collection and a host of memorabilia. Some of the t-shirts uh, are really quite provocative and even today people find them um, slightly con well, controversial. The Sex Pistols and the bands that would spring up around them knocked the prog rock bands right off the stage. With a howling screech against the establishment designed to provoke. You know, people have an idea of what punk rock is, and we're trying to just sort of take them back and say, this is the beginning of it. The style and the music are called punk rock. Imagined in real violence, sadism, and self-torture are in. To listen to old newscasts, you'd think that aliens had landed from outer space, or that the nation's young had been seduced by a dangerous cult in an act of mass hypnosis. The clothes are wild. One favorite, a dress made from a bin liner. Canadian translation, a green garbage bag. The initial punk phenomenon lasted only a few years. But those angry three chord riffs have reverberated through the decades. Glenn Matlock is what you would call, with a certain amount of irony, of course, punk royalty. I wanna By virtue of once being a member of the Sex Pistols. He left the band or was pushed, depending on who you believe, in 1977. But he co-wrote most of the music on the only full album the Pistols ever released. He says he's moved on musically, but he's proud of the punk years. It wasn't the only one, but it was one of the last sort of real telling kind of youth movements that was not manufactured in any way. It was a product of its time, rising unemployment, race riots, and Margaret Thatcher waiting in the wings. There was a real air of despondency, and the song that's become known as God Save the Queen was actually originally called, originally called No Future. God Save the Queen! The fascist regime! It became a punk anthem, got them banned from the airwaves, and increased violence towards young people on the streets, finding their expression through punk fashion. She ain't no human being. All these years later, Matlock says he's not particularly bothered by the royal family. Punk lost its fire just a few years in. But my worry with punk is that it's a bit people reliving the past, but I think it's human nature. <laughs> Denmark Street, Soho, also known as Tin Pan Alley. The building with the guitar store on the bottom floor used to house a couple of the Sex Pistols and the band's studio. It was recently listed by Historic England, and the Heritage Lottery Fund has given Punk Britain a £99,000 grant for a year-long celebration. 
But if you've been appropriated by the very establishment you were trying to tear down in the first place, does it nullify the original meaning of the protest, even if it was decades ago? Joe Corey is the son of British fashion designer Vivian Westwood and former Sex Pistols manager and image master Malcolm McLaren, now deceased. Corey objects to punk being enlisted in the service of tourism or consumerism, calling it a perversion of sorts. This is now going to be what Britain's celebrating this year because we don't have a royal wedding for them to distract everyone with. This is now going to be punk rock London. Well, fuck it, let's burn it. And all the t-shirts are amazing. Corey has a collection of punk clothes and trinkets worth an estimated five million pounds. This is an even one off. That he says he'll He's burn in the name. fall, There's a gesture like of disgust. It. There's only one of those ever. He says celebrating punk Britain sugarcoats what really happened back then. We had death threats all the time. People like Johnny Rotten were stabbed in the street and cut up. People would go out and get their faces smashed in just for being a punk rocker. Not all soldiers of punk are so negative about the movement being fetid. And there are plenty who will tell you the music, at least, is still going strong. This is a gig by the UK subs, one of the oldest punk groups in Britain still going, and even going to Canada on tour in the fall. Frontman Charlie Harper is in his 70s. But you wouldn't know it. And if British punk is being celebrated, he's all for it. It's great, really, because every show we've been doing has been full, <laughs> or over full, and um, 30 years ago or 35 years ago, there's an old bunkstead and new things coming, you know, it's doing well. And, you know, this is a year where, you know, it's stepped up a level and, you know, it's nice. It's, it's our work, so we're, we're loving it. The 100 Club is one of punk rock's legendary venues. Everybody from The Clash to The Dam to The Pistols played here. And it's a full house for the subs tonight. The band can still pull in young, talented musicians. Drummer Jamie says his mom first introduced him to punk. It would seem sort of a bit of a surgence the last like five, five to six years or so. You know, certainly the popularity of UK subs has, has gone up. Up at street level, some of the fans were also pointed in punk's direction by their parents. This Sid was named after Sid Vicious. But most of the crowd are in their 40s or 50s, and there's more than a hint of nostalgia in the air. The atmosphere a far cry from those early days of alienated youth. So you guys like it, but is it because you just can't move on? Or is How is dare it, is you, it, madam? <laughs> <laughs> or I'm is it... <laughs> Coming out of school in the, in the late 70s like I did, you know, to, to no future with, with a Thatcher government, it was something you, you, you latched onto and was right for you. The songs meant something to you and the lyrics meant something to you, you know? Yeah. Punk will never die as long as we've got something to fight against and something to argue against, which we always will have. That speaks to the notion of punk being just as much about ideas as anything else. Independence, self-expression. The 80s inspired mohawk wearing punks of Camden Town are getting harder to find, but they're still around, tending to their hair. It's still anti establishment, and maybe that attitude is in, in a different place now. Maybe things like Anonymous, the hacking group, and you know, different parts of society have that. Punk has often been referred to as a broad church, a community of misfits and outsiders that invited them inside. Ah! 
So is it ready for the museums? The curators collecting bits and pieces of punk and putting them under glass say it's important to understand just how revolutionary punk's appearance on the scene was, burning so fast and so bright that it seemed to consume itself. I've got a new rose, I've got a good. But punk was a living, breathing, heaving thing. Never, Never intended to stay inside the lines. Margaret Evans, CBC News, London. Cheers! <laughs> <laughs>